special day. So welcome. Um, I shall hand over the, the microphone to yourself. And if everyone can just stay muted, and please actively put your questions in the chat panel, and I'll, I'll walk through those at the end. So over to you, Andrew. Thank you. Thank you, Martin, and thank you for the great job that you do for the Central Gold Coast Chamber of Commerce. It's very important that uh, we have as much engagement with our small businesses here on the Gold Coast as possible. Uh, obviously, Moncrief here in the centre of the Gold Coast is 32,111 small businesses at the last count, uh, and I'm focused very much on helping small business as much as I can through this period uh, and, and supporting you. So I'm pleased to be here today to speak to you directly. I know there's been some emails that have gone out uh, through the chamber um, uh, highlighting some of the tools that my office is providing, but I'll, I'll get back to that. But to start with, the federal government is firmly focused uh, on small business and small business as the engine room of the Gold Coast uh, is therefore my, uh, my full focus as well. Um, to date, there's been $320 billion of, of package that's, uh, that's been injected into the economy. Uh, and so that's to obviously help help small business and help, as I said, the engine of the economy running. Um, the, the $130 billion JobKeeper package, uh, you'll start to see payments coming into your, your businesses if you've applied for that uh, from, uh, from early next month, uh, which is very, very soon. So I know it's been a difficult period getting through this last four or five weeks where you've had to uh, pay staff however you can, um, but that money will be then backdated uh, to you and delivered to your business. So that will help uh, and of course, the enrolment has now been extended up to the 31st of May, uh, which, is, which is terrific news for you. Uh, also, the government's providing up to $100,000 to eligible businesses for cash flow injections at a minimum of $20,000. That will also help as we move forward. Uh, now that we're through this difficult time, all of these other injections will help you as we move forward. Um, and indeed help your cash flow. Uh, also, in addition to that, the SME guarantee, which you're aware of, which is the uh, guarantee uh, scheme, which will support SMEs to get access to working capital, very important. Uh, the government will um, guarantee 50% of new loans uh, issued by the eligible lenders. Uh, and also uh, the government support, that will be $40 billion of lending to SMEs. So that will also inject uh, a big boost to the economy and help us get through this difficult time. Uh, obviously, there's also been that temporary relief for directors, which I'm sure many of you cited big, uh, big relief uh, when that was announced, um, and support for, um, for the, uh, the instant asset write-off, which came out in the first package. So that's been increased up to 150,000 uh, backing business investment by providing that accelerated depreciation as well. Um, also, the support for apprentices, uh, and trainees with 50% subsidised for nine months from the 1st of January 2020 to the 30th of September uh, this year as well. Um, and can I say also the targeted support for regions and uh, following on from my roundtable uh, that I held at the start with, with Senator Birmingham, the Minister for Trade and Tourism, uh, a short few weeks ago, in fact it was his last engagement before shutdown, uh, we discussed uh, what the Gold Coast specifically needs uh, to keep going and how we could support particularly our theme parks uh, get through to the other side and you may have seen just in this last uh, few days at the beginning of the week we did an announcement at SeaWorld uh, with Minister Robert and Minister Andrews uh, around the 95 million dollars that's gone into zoos and aquariums around the country uh, of which our theme parks here on the Gold Coast will, will greatly benefit uh, and that includes uh, any of the theme parks that have animals uh, and that is uh, certainly a destination for us here on the Gold Coast with our, uh, not only with our drive market, our interstate market, uh, our uh, national market, and of course, ultimately our international market, very important uh, to keep our, our animals going. Uh, and it, it came to my attention while I was there, it's a thousand dollars a week to feed a dolphin. Um, so <laughs> you can imagine what the bill is for Village Roadshow alone. It was a, a huge bill to feed their animals. So that's um, some funding that we've injected into the local economy, which will help. Um, some other areas that we've injected some funding would be in, into uh, yesterday. I had a, a doorstop with Minister Andrews down at Burley, uh, where she has a fund that's going into manufacturing locally. Uh, and there were two businesses in Moncrief who benefited from that uh, funding, uh, Patterson Glass in Molondina, uh, and also Chemist House in Molondina. So uh, the government is firmly focused on helping business get through. Uh, and um, it's, 
as, as I said before, it's a difficult time, but we're firmly focused uh, on that, so very important. Um, National Cabinet also agreed that the short-term intervention is required in the co commercial tenancies area, and we saw a code of conduct come out of, uh, out of the National Cabinet uh, with a moratorium on evictions for the next six months, uh, which is very important. Difficult for uh, landlords uh, at this time, and I, I recognise that and acknowledge that, uh, but it's really important that um, your members um, negotiate with their landlords to get through this difficult period, uh, and it's reasonable to expect landlords to, to, to be a little more flexible than usual, uh, and up to, of course, the two parties to negotiate their way through that. Uh, so Queensland has legislated around that, as we've heard as well. So all of these are the first, second and third tranches of support measures that the federal government's put in place for your business. Uh, and what I've done recently from my office is put together a business help finder, uh, which the Chamber has kindly sent through to the businesses in the last 24 hours. Uh, and it is uh, answers to all of those questions uh, that you may have about your business and how the federal government, indeed the state government and the council, uh, are supporting you through this, this difficult time. Uh, so you can just go to my website, angiebell.com.au, click on the business help finder, click on whether you're a sole trader, uh, whether you are a small business SME or whether you are a not-for-profit uh, and it will take you to the relevant website pages for the information uh, that you might need. So that's what the federal government's doing for you. Um, in addition to that, um, I would also like to talk about, how long have I got to talk, Martin? Am I on a timer? No, you're oh. not. No, yeah. Hi Marshall, how are you? Very good. Great to see you. No, you're good. We'll, we'll let you know if it's going on too long. Okay. So that's a, a pretty much a summary. Um, and I'm sure you're all aware of that as you've been navigating through the last four or five weeks uh, to get to where you are today. Uh, I wanted to talk about what I feel uh, with my past experience as a business development manager and indeed a consultant and an author in that area for small business. Uh, what I feel is um, appropriate for business, uh, small business, medium business, um, to be doing right now during this period. Um, because now is the time to really reassess where you're at in your business. Um, and I think the main things, if I can just make a few points around it, uh, as a process of, as a small business, former small business owner and operator, um, it's, it's important to have a process around what you're doing when you're looking uh, at your business model. And we've seen uh, some of the weaknesses around lack of diversity uh, when it comes to revenue streams and supply chains uh, across the country, uh, not just in, in small business, but uh, across the board. Uh, so I would encourage uh, business owners to have a look at their revenue models uh, and see if that can be diversified uh, during this time. So if you can plan moving forward to diversify your revenue streams and where they're coming from uh, is very, very important to have more than one. Uh, and I was talking with eBay Australia uh, two days ago, uh, and they, the figure they threw at me was 57% of Australian businesses still don't have an online presence. Uh, and that absolutely floored me um, to think that business uh, in our great country haven't taken the opportunity to grab that rev revenue stream from uh, online. So it's a good time to have a look at that. Uh, and just for your information, they're actually doing a three-month campaign, uh, which is free of charge for SMEs uh, to go online uh, at the moment. So that's a, a great solution uh, right there. So diversifying revenue streams is really important. Diversifying supply chains. Now, we've seen this uh, across the country at a national level uh, where we have relied on supply chains that haven't been reliable. So uh, my recommendation and... Um, which I outlined also in my book some seven years ago, um, was to diversify your supply chain. So that means local supply, um, interstate supply, uh, national supply and international supply. Uh, because we're seeing small businesses uh, who have perhaps one supplier, let's talk about Italian shoe shop, for example, who has two or three suppliers from Italian suppliers and only bricks and mortar revenue. Uh, and that has proven to be disastrous for some small retailers uh, right here on Chevron Island, can I say. Um, 
who have had to close their doors because there hasn't been a big enough diversity, let's say, uh, in, in, their, um, in their supply chain. So really important that we build in that diversity uh, to, to, to cover us as we move forward around that. Thirdly, innovation. We hear people talk about innovation, innovation, innovation. What does that mean? Well, I would like to highlight that the Gold Coast is leading the way uh, when it comes to um, communication technology. Uh, and we here, have right here in Southport, um, the Telstra 5G Centre. And I would encourage you all to do a little bit of uh, research around 5G and what it can bring and how it can bring change to your business and what it can do. Um, uh, I can give you a couple of examples. One example is uh, Vodafone UK uh, recently had the very first holographic telephone call that went across a 300 kilometre span for uh, three minutes. Now you say, well, well that's amazing. Uh, how does that apply to my business? Well, I think moving forward, we need to think about how we're going to innovate for the future, uh, what our customers' expectation of our service delivery looks like, and how we can incorporate uh, technology into that. So do we have a holographic salesperson at the front door uh, who can increase our sales uh, not decrease our employment uh, um, employees, but increase our sales, increase our capacity so that we can have more employees. Uh, and so um, how do we use innovation towards growth is a really important question uh, for each and every one of um, the small businesses on the Gold Coast to, to start thinking about. And finally, um, uh, sustainability in, into your business model and how sustainable is it? Uh, and how quickly does it have to change? How sustainable um, is your employment model? How sustainable is your profit model? I mean, if you're at the end of the day, if your net profit is is under five percent, is it really worth doing what you're doing? Uh, do you need to do you need to completely rehash your business model in order to uh, improve your net profit? Can you shorten your supply chain so that your margin is larger uh, and your competitive pricing is lower? Um, so this is these are all the things that I think a small business need to be looking at right now. Uh, because the competitive environment, as you reposition your business, uh, the competitive environment is going to be greater. Uh, and that's not just for, uh, you know, the Gold Coast as a destination in regards to tourism, etc. This is about your, who you're competing with um, in, in the global economy and certainly in the national economy at this point in time uh, online. So a good way to go to work towards that would be to have a look at best practice around you. Uh, I, I call it put, on, put your big on, put your business intelligence goggles on uh, and have a look around and see what people are doing and see what you can incorporate into your business, uh, what you would consider could fit with you uh, and bolt that onto your business and make the changes. And it's all about moving quickly right now. Very, very important. And then, of course, redesigning. So we've done reassessing, repositioning, redesigning uh, are all about uh, your platforms. So how, how can you change what you're doing um, quickly? So a good story would be, for example, Frank Goldstein here on, on Chevron Island uh, went from selling pies to selling flour when there was demand for it in a bag. So he was, he was able to pivot very quickly uh, with his years and years of experience. He pivoted very quickly due to demand because there was that period where we had a very high demand for flour, as we know, unnecessarily. However, uh, it was a high demand for consumer driven demand for flour. Uh, and Frank was able to buy his flour at a wholesale price, package it in bags and then on sell it to retain his profit. So he pivoted and moved very, very quickly. And I think that's what we all need to do in our business models, uh, including Australian manufacturing business models, not just um, SMEs. Uh, very important. Uh, another example of that would be Rickshaw's restaurant down at Burley. We've all enjoyed uh, some of their food along, along the way. They were able to very quickly change their takeaway menu uh, so that um, they brought their prices down. They made uh, Rickshaw's takeaway. They had a pop-up store in Main Beach. Uh, so they pivoted very, very quickly to make sure that they kept their customer base happy. Uh, and uh, of course, they are now in a very good position to move to move forward, uh, indeed with JobKeeper as well. Uh, and lastly, it's about relaunching your, your business. What changes have you made? How has your offer changed? How has your branding changed? Uh, and also doing a brand uh, touch point audit. So that's about looking at where your consumer touches your brand uh, in every way. 
uh, and making sure that is a, a similar experience for your consumer. And that might be letterheads, business cards, logos, um, people, um, your, your product, how you sell, your service. All of those things need to be checked to make sure that they are as good as they can be. Uh, and of course, at the moment, it's all about mitigating risk when it comes to health factors uh, and how are you managing, mitigating uh, the health risk in your business. Uh, and I'll be working very closely in this space. Um, just had the mayor in the office with a, a meeting. We've been talking about mitigating risk across the city so that we can be a safe uh, destination for our markets when they come back. And it's very important that Gold Coast business leads in that space uh, because we do have the biggest volume here. Uh, I, we here in Moncrief have doubled the small business a volume of most other electorates around the country. So it is up to us to lead in this space moving forward. Okay, I think that's uh, my summary <laughs> okay, that's good. Uh, of, of what we're delivering and, and how I see business um, updating uh, and uh, changing what they're doing at this point in time. Awesome, thank you Angie. Um, we've got a few questions coming in. Um, uh, kick off initially with a Topical one. What are you hearing at a federal perspective regarding the opening of borders? Well, uh, opening of borders is um, is something for uh, the national cabinet to talk about, and it is indeed up to the state premiers as to what they do with the borders. And I know that the um, the prime minister uh, is working very cooperatively with the premiers, and I should say the other premiers and chief ministers are working very cooperatively with the Prime Minister uh, in this space, but ultimately that is up to um, uh, the, uh, the state authorities to decide what they do with their borders. No, no, no insights at this stage. Okay. Um, as I said at the, the opening, we, um, we just came from a, um, a CCIQ statewide meeting there with um, Deb Frecklington, leader of the opposition. Um, a lot of the talk was around um, a potential second wave of business closures, not necessarily driven by uh, the virus, but also perhaps just by um, as businesses come out of this this hibernation um, and not quite being able to keep up with the tides. Um, what are your thoughts around a potential second wave of business closures that perhaps you're hearing? Well, I haven't heard directly of um, a wave of business closures at this point in time, we don't have at, at this point the data uh, around how many businesses may have closed that, that I've seen. We do have the Regional Development uh, Queensland is uh, uh, the Regional Development Australia, um, Estella is do actually doing a survey currently to small businesses to try and get the data around that. Um, I, I think what we need to do is focus on what's happening now. Uh, see what happens when JobKeeper kicks in, uh, when, when that cash is, is put into the economy. And there's about $30 billion worth of cash, according to the Treasurer. Uh, the other night I had a phone hookup with him uh, and he outlined that $30 billion would be injected into the economy over the next few weeks. Now, that's quite an injection <laughs> uh, into the economy. And so I think we'll see, um, we'll see some good things come out of that. We'll see some not as many business closures. Um, and I think some of the business closures are about go back to that problem with, uh, with business models uh, not being agile enough to move quickly uh, and not having enough diversity within those business models. And so I would uh, encourage small business to get on top of their business model as soon as they can. Now that we've got the time, some businesses are temporarily closed. Now is the time to reinvent what you're doing to make sure your business model is more robust uh, and more diverse uh, and I, I, you know that looks different for every business uh, but it's about it's time to think outside the square and, and really figure out how you're going to make your business survive with the cash injection the cash flow injections so the first one will be job keeper that will be coming to you in the next few weeks uh, and then there will be other cash flow injections um, if you've applied for them and, and if you can get them um, and so it's important to plan uh, because you'll never get what you don't plan for. Uh, uh, plan, your, plan your way out, always mitigating that health risk, uh, top of mind, because without a safe environment, uh, it's very difficult to get customers. Um, but we'll see those businesses who do have an online presence have ramped that up. Uh, and particularly in retail, eBay, eBay was saying to me that it was eight, only 8% 8 of retail is done online. 
Uh, and so I think we'll see that increase. And I, I don't think that will go backwards once it's increased. So if, if online retail gets up to 20%, um, then that means some businesses uh, are going, they've, they've actually grown their online business during this period. Um, and, and so I think it's, it all comes back to the business model as to, as to who's going to survive. If you can move quickly to change what you're doing in order to bolster yourself through this period, add on uh, federal government incentive, add on state government incentive, add on council incentive, uh, and there may be more coming, uh, let's hope there is, for, for small business, then it's about just getting through uh, so that you can be more profitable on the other side, and that's really important. Thank you. Um, we'll just jump back a bit to um, uh, some, some board-related stuff. Uh, Ken, one of our, our board members, has noted that um, although we've talked about international borders being closed, um, we are likely to benefit obviously from domestic tourism. Uh, but people need to, to get here, whatever planes, trains, planes, trains and automobiles. Um, when do you uh, see some opportunity for the transport infrastructure likely to be um, reopened? Well, these are, these are um, decisions of National Cabinet as we reopen. Currently, I am working across different sectors uh, with city leaders uh, uh, to share our strategy locally with one another uh, in order to find a pathway forward as, and, and trigger points. Now, I know I've been speaking very closely with Destination Gold Coast over the last few weeks, uh, and I know that they have key trigger points for when they will consider markets to open. Uh, I think we need to tread very carefully uh, because the last thing we want to do is open up too quickly in order to then trigger another outbreak um, because that could prove disastrous. So we need to uh, put in place mechanisms to make sure that small business are conducting their business uh, in a, a COVID safe manner. And, and, and a lot of that will come back to downloading the COVID safe app. We need to get 10 million Australians on that app. Currently, uh, as of yesterday, it was 3 million. So it was a million a day, people who had, uh, who had signed up for the app. A million a day for the first three days. I don't have the stats for this morning. It could be another million, I'm not sure. Um, I'm sure it will come to me. Uh, but we need to get to 10 million uh, people on that app in order for that to be effective across the country. And what that means is if we can trace, uh, if we can trace the app and we can uh, respond to any outbreaks, that means we can localise the response uh, and there's no need to shut down uh, more than we need to. And that's very important for business. So the key, the ticket out, as the Prime Minister has said, is the COVID Safe app. And if you, uh, I'm sure m most of you, if not all of you, have already downloaded it. And I thank you for that, for that support. But please send through to your networks uh, the links to download the COVID Safe app because it's very important for business here on the Gold Coast uh, that, that we uh, use that app. Thank you. Um, okay, uh, some tourism businesses may not be able to open while social distance is in place, as it won't it won't be financially viable. Um, what sort of support um, will there be for those type of businesses? For example, um, fishing charters and, and the like. Well, those businesses um, have a couple of supports. They have JobKeeper, uh, which will inject some some cash flow into their into their business. Um, if they're not able to to keep their staff, uh, then there's also Job Seeker, which has been doubled to $1,100. So there's an extra $550 coronavirus supplement that's been added into that. Uh, and it's important also just to outline that, that Job Keeper uh, will be taxed uh, and Job Seeker will not be taxed. So uh, you'll find that Job Keeper at $1,500 a fortnight uh, will require those recipients uh, to pay tax on it, uh, and Job Seeker at $1,100 a fortnight will not. So uh, it doesn't take business people long to figure out that that's around about the same, uh, the, the same income. But uh, it is designed um, f as a temporary measure to get us through. Uh, and, um, you know, the National Cabinet, the Prime Minister, the Treasurer are all working towards, uh, in, you know, helping business along the way. We understand that SMEs, sole traders and not-for-profits are very, very important to our national economy and no place more so than here on the Gold Coast. So um, let's hope that there's more measures put in place uh, at all levels of government uh, 
um, but that is a decision for the Prime Minister and the Treasurer, uh, indeed, moving forward. I suppose just to pull that apart a little bit more, that the context being much like we've got to feed the dolphins, a charter boat, for example, has a lot of overheads and operating costs, which are nowhere near covered by, uh, by the uh, job keeper, job seeker stuff. So perhaps that's just a, a point to bear in mind, I suppose. Well, it's certainly something I could bring up with the Deputy Prime Minister. Yeah, uh, so I'm happy to take uh, any, any letters uh, from any of the Chamber members, uh, requests for support and investigate uh, where there is any extra additional support available. More than happy to, to take any emails from any members and we'll, uh, my office will follow those up with uh, the relevant Minister. Okay, thank you. Um, just jumping into the contentious issue of landlords and tenants. Obviously, landlords and tenants are being told to not evict clients, but they cannot collect landlord insurance unless they do. Is there any action or update in that area? Well, uh, as we know, uh, tenancies is an issue for state government. Uh, now, they did have one day in Parliament, um, I think it was last week, uh, at where they legislated around that as far as um, who can apply for uh, rent relief. Uh, and so that has now been legislated by the Queensland government. Uh, and uh, there are some links on my website to, to that information. Uh, but um, the code of conduct has been put in place by the federal government and it's up to the states to either legislate or regulate around that. Okay, thank you. Um, uh, so two, two questions from two different people. Still going back to the app, the first one is how can we encourage people to take up the app? But then um, one of the uh, guests online has suggested, if, or requested if there's an electronic PDF or some sort of promotional blurb that we can then disseminate to our um, membership and then onwards to associations of members here today. Yes, well, it's funny you should say that, Martin. I'll just, um, <laughs> since we're sitting at my desk, um, I can show you what uh, I'm currently working on for members. Um, that wasn't set up, by the way, for everyone's benefit. That was a genuine, <laughs> genuine question that came through. Let, let me pick you all up and just show you what's on my screen now because it's exactly what you're talking about, a PDF that we can uh, put up in your businesses and around various areas of the Gold Coast. Uh, and uh, this is actually the one that's on my screen is, is, uh, is an example and it's got Southport on it. So it's not Central Chamber, but it's close. Uh, here we go. So let's have a look at that. Okay. So um, my office will be providing those posters for um, the app uh, and we can provide them with all of the different words on it uh, to whoever would like them uh, and we can print them out for you and... Um, you can either pick them up from the office or we can drop them or post them or so uh, again please if you would like some of those send through an email to my office uh, and my team will print some off for you uh, with the relevant um the relevant suburb on it okay. um just so i'm conscious of time something that's been going around my industry recently we, we refer to you know it's life gym but not as we know it um, and certainly that's going to be the way going forward. So how do you, as the, um, the member for Moncrief, um, see the Gold Coast evolving and, and how will it look? Would you say life, Jim? Yeah, yeah, the Star Trek quote, life, Jim, but not as we know. You know so oh, so you, you're talking about post-COVID world? Yeah, how, how's, how's the Gold Coast going to recover and, and how do you see it looking in, in Moncrief? Well, I think it's important, number one, that we all work together. Uh, and uh, I will have some announcements in the coming days about how I intend to, to lead the Central Gold Coast recovery across a number of sectors. Uh, uh, and the key to that is working together. Uh, and I've just had the Mayor in my office here for an hour uh, talking with him about his, his ideas and his planning for the road to recovery. And I think it's really important that all key industry, including business, small business particularly, as the engine room, uh, of the Gold Coast come together to pave the way uh, towards the road to recovery. Uh, I think what small business needs to be doing right now is those key aspects that I talked about. That is uh, reassessing, reinventing, reinvigorating your business, uh, relaunching it, making sure you are ready for each stage of reopen. Now we don't know exactly when they will be and that's why uh, it's important to be ready, uh, to, you know, to change your business, to be ready to move. And I think be ready to keep changing, uh, to keep innovating. Now, we all know with business models and with, um, uh, with revenue streams and with diversifying business and with everything you do when you work on your business, um, 
getting pestered here. <laughs> Everything you do working on your business um, is, is an incremental change towards the future. And so those businesses who don't incorporate incremental change find themselves at some point having to make monumental leaps forward. So quantum leaps uh, with limited resources. And that's uh, where some businesses have unfortunately found themselves in this last five weeks where they haven't been able, uh, they haven't been in a position to make huge changes because they haven't had the resources and there's been a lot of pressure. Uh, and as we know with, with this crisis, it's been difficult to move quickly. So those businesses who are flexible, who have flexibility built into their models, who are able to update quickly, move, change, do the sorts of things that Frank Goldstein did with his many years of experience. Um, they are the businesses who will survive this and who will grow on the other side because there will be growth, uh, but it will be a new landscape. It'll be a new business scape on the other side and it will be those businesses who have updated their models, who have innovated, who have also, can I say, incorporated sustainability into their business model, uh, and that is sustainability around profit margins, so uh, profit, sustainability around their people, uh, so investing in their people, very, very important, and of course, sustainability around the planet, so making sure that um, we've, we've built in a green element into our branding, uh, and, you know, World, world leading brands have been doing this for probably 10 years uh, because as we move through the generations and as climate becomes more important to young people uh, and to the world generally, um, it is something that we need to, to work towards. So whilst we need to support um, our resource sector, very, very important, particularly for Queensland, we also need to balance that. Um, with looking after our environment. So very, very important to build that into your branding uh, as a business. Uh, so that's the people, the profit and the planet. Uh, sustainability on three levels, very, very important. Thank you. Um, yeah, Ken's quite cleverly suggested this is the time for people to discover uh, more Australia to rediscover the Gold Coast. Um, listen, we'll probably draw us to a close. Um, uh, we've, um, as you're aware, Andy, you and I had a, a private chat a day or so ago. We've, We've, we're offering um, a free membership and free renewal to all our members because you know we've got a, a fairly um, auspicious position, I suppose, on the coast representing small business ones that we're very proud of and continue to to, to spread the message. Um, and we will continue to do that. This this um, webinar will be online with the others. We've got a, a series of a few more coming along. Um, but obviously, we are we, we are still a, a voluntary board. So I know I've asked you privately, I just don't ask you publicly again, but any support you can give us to continue to, to spread that love, because although we're all volunteers, we do have uh, we do have bills to pay. So I'm happy to, to keep um, flying the flag as we always will and will continue to. So listen, you're, you're part of that. Thank you for your support of the Chamber and also coming online today. As I said, this will be, um, uh, the record will be on, on the website. I think we've got a, a transcript that we can access to. So thank you again on behalf of myself and my board and all our members. And um, we'll see you well, soon, if not on the other side.